All right, today we're just going to do a final review of uh, general printer settings for this Sato CL, excuse me, CL4NX Plus. This is the newer model that Brady is offering for use with their aerospace tags, aerospace RFID tags. These are a little bit thicker, and we're going to go through quickly what the generic print settings should be for this and the other two sizes uh, in these on metal tags. They call them alloy tags. And then I want to talk briefly about uh, print pressure, just final print quality kinds of issues. So real quick, uh, I think we went through this before, put in the IP address of the printer uh, in a browser and you'll log in with password 0310 and you can go into settings, imaging, right? And you'll see all of these things. So. This would be my recommendations for setup of <clears throat> the Sato printer for the Brady alloy tags. The label length, regardless of the size, I believe they're all 60 millimeter from notch to notch. So if you look um, from one spacer piece to the next spacer piece, it's 60 millimeters from here to here, right? From the bottom of that one to the top of that one should be 60 millimeters. And 60 millimeters times, right? 60 millimeters times 24 dots per millimeter is 1440. So put 1440 up here for label length. And for label width, you know, uh, basically it shuts the dots off if you make it narrower than the full 2496. And that can save um, the dots uh, <clears throat> from wearing out due to heat. You know, it's, it's up to you if you want to leave it that way or not. But for generic purposes, the widest Brady tag is 70 millimeters times, again, 24 dots per millimeter gives you 1680, and that's what I put there. All right, you're using ribbon. Speed should be two, never faster. Sensor type is gap. Uh, continuous print mode. That keeps it from backfeeding, okay? So continuous print mode. Um, backfeed none. Darkness is A, darkness Darkness range A and darkness 10. And imaging, I went through this uh, in another, another video. This is just for this printer. I've adjusted the vertical and the horizontal positions a little bit. I come back here I've to push the text forward into the printer to move it up, basically. Uh, I use a positive value on vertical. This is dots. All right, so that's a half a millimeter. And in horizontal, doesn't make any sense until you read the manual, but nonetheless, negative pushes the text that way to the right. Okay, so um, and then under advanced, there's not much here. Leave these things the way they are. Don't really see a need to start online. So when you power it up, it's in online mode and ready to print. Okay, notice also when it feeds properly, when you've adjusted the gap sensor properly, uh, the Right above the previous uh, tag, <clears throat> and right at that crease there, that should be right on the tear bar. Okay, when, when you're uh, doing this, right, I'm going to hit um, go on into offline mode, hit feed, and hit feed. It should come out right to that tear bar. Okay, if it doesn't, then your gap sensor is not not adjusted properly. All right, last step here is. Print head pressure, just want to release some of the tension on this ribbon so you can see. There's two knobs at the top, and <clears throat> there are some assistance in the manual to describe how you should increase or decrease pressure based upon the thickness of the material and the width of the material. Okay, so if you have thick material and you're on this side, you're going to be using four or five as your setting, okay, for thick tag, thick tag, right? And then on narrow material, and we have very narrow material, right? It's about one inch, what is it, 35 millimeters for this one? So one and a half millimeters about. Um, <clears throat> your right dial is going to be set to one. So let's come back to our camera. I want this one to be set all the way to the left because I have narrow tag, right? I don't have wide tag, I have narrow tag. 
So I want that to be one. And I want this one to at least be four. You could increase the pressure if you want all the way to five. If you start to see some dropout on some edges, um, you might increase the pressure a little bit. Uh, increasing the pressure will you know, give you more wear on your print head and maybe it's a shorter life. But if you start to see things like this, where it's right at the bottom, you'll see that it's um, fading. Okay. Uh, increase the pressure uh, to its five setting and see if that doesn't actually solve your problem. Okay. So that's that's the the large part of print head pressure, print head printer adjustments. And you know, while we're here, maybe we'll just do one more thing here. You want to line up, I don't know if I can get in there. I might have to move my camera manually here. As you get in here, you'll see that there's two marks. One that looks like a little triangle on a line. If you're an electric electrician, it's a diode symbol kind of like. And then this one, gosh, I'm just not able to focus on it. But basically ignore that. That's for black mark, and this is for gap. So take that sensor, and you can push this whole thing left and right, right? You want that line right there to line up with the notch, right? So when the notch is properly put in, and your edge guide is set in the back to keep it in that position, that should be right dead center right with that line. If you do that, uh, you're going to get this thing to feed properly. All right. And I think that that is the large part of what we need to cover here. If you do those things, you're going to be able to use these uh, Brady templates without too much trouble. Uh, just remember, you know, if, the, if you're network connecting these, uh, the browser can be your easiest way to check the settings in the printer and to make these adjustments.